Hey everyone, my name is Todd Maddox. I'm a Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer and I'm also the owner of Tampa Bay Tech Solutions. I got onto Windows 8. I'm obviously, I'm a very avid, savvy user uh, and I had a lot of trouble. It's hard to get around and find your way around and so I wanted to make a quick video just to show you guys uh, some of the real basics, uh, 50,000 foot overview of Windows 8 so that as a Windows 7 user you should easily be able to watch this video and jump right into it so you can get around, you know, find your way around and go from there. So check out these couple of tips I have for you. I'm excited to share them with you. So what we have here is a very basic installation of Windows 8. I'm sorry my screen recording program doesn't work with Windows 8 yet so we'll have to do it this way. One thing I want to show you is the basic function of how to move around on Windows 8. So you see my mouse there in the corner. So any corner is going to have uh, functionality. So the top right corner is always going to bring up what's now known as sort of like the control panel or settings. So you see here there's a settings button. All right. This is going to bring up some really basic information. How to shut the computer down. That's it. That's how you shut it down. It took me like 10 minutes to figure this out from Windows as a Windows 7 user. So up in the top right corner, pull it down to settings. That's going to get you to the power or shutdown. All right. This also has some other basic PC settings like your control panel. You'll see some different uh, options here to personalize notifications, uh, general that sort of thing. This is basically the old, old school control panel. Whenever you're in any screen and you want to close it, you can drag the mouse to the very top and you get this little hand symbol, right? And by clicking, I then have control of this window, right? And I'm going to just scroll it straight down, kind of throw it down out of the screen. So that is, that's how you're going to, if anything we open up, let's say we open up SkyDrive, okay? I don't have a SkyDrive account set up yet. We grab, go scroll to the top, grab that window, and chuck it to the bottom. I didn't do it fast enough. There you go. Now it's gone. That brings us back to the start screen. Another we can, way we can do that, let's open this back up. You can also mouse to the top left corner and that will show you, which fail. That will show you any other apps that you have open if you want to jump between them. So this is the SkyDrive account and I opened up Maps. I can switch to the Map account. All right. Again, I'm just going to the top left corner, clicking on it, it'll switch whatever window. Another way we can do this, another way we can get around is, you saw me do it once already, is you can go to the bottom left corner and that's going to get you to the start button menu. So if you're ever not on the start menu, say we're looking at messaging, okay, I can go down to this bottom left corner and see the start tiles there. I just click in it and it's going to bring you back to this page with the tiles. This was called Metro for a while, but I think they've changed it now. They're not calling it Metro anymore. I'm also going to show you how you can get around this. If you have opened up multiple apps, how to get to them. So I opened up a couple of apps, and before I showed you quickly, you can click Open Apps. You can kind of cycle through the different apps that you have open by pointing this mouse at the top left screen here. You click up here to switch. All right, there's Internet Explorer couple other apps I have open. So if you have multiple apps open, you can go up to the top left corner, then you can scroll down. All I did was drag the mouse down a little bit and it's going to bring up all the apps that I have open. It looks like I have Internet Explorer. I also have the messaging app open right now. All right. So I'm assuming if we open up more apps, let's try it. Let's also open up the maps here. All right. I'm going to go back down to the bottom corner. I'm also going to open up SkyDrive. Okay, I'm going to open up a bunch of stuff. They're all asked for a Microsoft account. I haven't created that yet. So if you go back to the start menu here, I can go to the top left corner. I can drag down and it's going to show me all these different apps that I have open. Now let's say I wanted to Internet Explorer. I can drag this open, drag this over here. So now we're looking at, uh, at the Internet Explorer app. Again, you can go up to the top left, drag down and see what else there is. If I want to close Internet Explorer now, I just grab it from the top and drag it down. Now that's closed. Also when I have this menu open, if I want to individually close items, I can just right click on them, like I'm going to close the messaging, I can right click on that and just hit close right from there and it closes that app. Okay, right click, close. I just closed the desktop app which is weird because it's the desktop. But So I can close all these apps, also have one down here, SkyDrive, 
close them all right from there, and then I can go back into the desktop from here. The first thing many of you are going to ask is, how do I make this look like my regular old Windows 7 desktop, which is a highly rec uh, recommended and requested feature. There's a tile right here that says desktop, right at the bottom here. So if I click on that, it's going to bring me to what looks like a Windows 7 desktop. Now you'll notice a major component missing from this desktop. That's the start bar. Again, if you go to the bottom left corner, you're going to see the Metro tab or the tab feature. That's going to bring you back to here. Again, you click this t desktop or you can click here. All right. That is going to be how you're going to get around back and forth. Now, if you are looking for your programs, start programs, they're not here. They're no longer there. You can't hit the start button and go to all programs. They're all apps now. So we're going to go to the Metro page. Okay. And from here, if I were to right click, I'm going to get this all apps option here. It doesn't happen if you left click, just with the I right click the mouse button, I get all apps. This is basically all programs. All right. These are some of the um, Windows programs that come with the machine, some of the things that they've installed. This is basically your all programs feature. So how do I get to that? Let's try it one more time. From here, I can right click anywhere in the white space, not on an icon, and click all apps. Now you can get rid of any of these tiles, any of these apps from the front page. So let's say I'm not a stocks guy, I can right click on this. And it gives me some options down here at the bottom. I can unpin it from start or even uninstall. Let's unpin it from the start for now. Let's say you did this to the desktop icon and you accidentally deleted it, right? You can still, you can still um, get to the desktop using the top right corner menu. So I can go from here and then this button here says start. That will take me back to the desktop as well. So if I want to get to the desktop, there's two ways to do it. One is by clicking this icon, as long as you still have it on your desktop. Another way is going to the top right corner and going down to the Start button to bring up your desktop. One more quick way that you can switch between the desktop and the Start page is simply by, by hitting the Windows key on your keyboard. All right? You hit the Windows key, it jumps from one to the other. That's a super fast way to switch back and forth between your desktop and your Start button start menu I mean. Another question we're often asked is how do we search? If there's no start button there's no search field. All right, This is very easy once you figure it out but it's pretty complicated before you figure it out. So if you click on this Metro tab bring this up all you have to do to search from here is start typing. So let's search for other uh, people often use the command prompt let's search, search for command so C-O-M-M -M. I start typing it automatically comes up. Here's the command prompt. It just came up with the search results. Now realize in the top right corner here, I'm searching in the apps right now. It defaults to the apps. So if I was looking for files, I would need to switch this to files so it would find that. Or if I'm looking for settings, something in the control panel, what used to be the control panel, you know, you have to identify what you're searching for. So it's going to default to apps and it found the command prompt right there. So all you do, again, Let's go back and try that again. To search, you just get to this page, the Metro page it's known as, and you just start typing. Let's search for Microsoft Paint this time. There it is. I just started typing Paint. It automatically comes up when you type. Very simple. The control panel is a little hard to find as well. If you're in this main screen, the start screen, all right, and I go down, I go up to the top right corner and then go down to settings, You'll see it doesn't talk about anything about the control panel. It talks about the tiles. All right, it gives you tiles options. All right. Now, if I wanted to get to the control panel, I can go to the desktop first. I do the exact same thing from the desktop. Go to the top right corner in settings, and now you'll see the control panel is the second option. It looks a lot like the old control panel, which is a good thing because we actually know where things are in here. But that's how you get to the control panel. You have to be on the desktop screen. Go to the top right corner settings and then control panel. You can also, from the start screen, just type 
control panel, start typing, and it does the search, and it can take you to the control panel there. That's obviously faster once people get used to learning how to do the search, but you can just type it in, and then you're at the control panel. It, this settings, if you go up to the top right and go down to settings, the settings menu is always for whatever app or program you're in. So for example, if I were to open this PDF file, and I'm in the built-in Windows PDF viewer, right? If I were to go to the top right corner and go down to settings, I'm going to get the settings up here for the Adobe program. It looks like it's having trouble focusing. Sorry about that. For the Adobe program. So these are the options related to this Adobe Reader app. Okay? It has nothing to do with Windows. And once I go back to the Windows screen or the start screen, that settings changes. These these options change. Now it's talking about the tiles and that sort of thing. So make sure that you keep that in mind that the settings is always or this menu is always for whatever app you're currently in. Again, I'm Todd Maddox. I'm the owner of Tampa Bay Tech Solutions. We're a local IT company. We specialize in computer repair, maintenance, and critical error monitoring for small businesses. If you're in the Tampa area, I would love to meet you. I can come out to your business and perform a free analysis of your existing network at no cost to you. You can hand that to your current IT guy, or we'd also love to give you a quote on how we can save you a lot of money and effort becoming your IT department. We just be... we. We outsource, you would outsource all your IT needs to us. So we become your IT department. We take care of everything, the backups. We do critical error monitoring. There's all kinds of exciting things I want to tell you about. But if you're not in the Tampa area and you have a business and you still need help, you can still contact me. We do a lot of work remotely. So we're happy to help anyone, no matter where you're at. Um, and if you're on the Internet, I can help you. Basically, is how it goes. So you can find us more. You can find out more about us and find us on, on the Internet on our website at tbtex.com. That's TB, like Tampa Bay, T-E-C-H-S. You can also check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash tbtex. Obviously, our YouTube page, we're happy to chat with you there. I was going to say you can also give us a call if you're in the Tampa area, 813-343-2562. So I'd love to hear from you guys. If you have any comments about the video, don't call me. I don't want to hear about that. But uh, post your comments below, and we definitely love to, especially if you have any tips or tricks on Windows 8, and we definitely want to share that and have this be a resource for people. I uh, appreciate your time. Thanks, everybody, and I'll talk to you again soon.